So each of these sea stars has got names. One of them right here is Clooney because he's got kind of silver hair. Prince is named after the purple color on his arm tips. I'm Jason Hoden. I'm a biologist studying the life cycle of sea stars and I'm trying to apply what I know to understanding the life cycle of the endangered sunflower star. It's called by scientists Pycnopodia helianthoides. It's famous because it's the largest sea star in the world. So it would get to be a couple of feet across or more. It's also a very mobile sea star. All of these things together made it a pretty notorious predator. They're very ravenous. I put the food on their tube feet so that they sense it, basically. And then they start moving it towards their mouth. They can pull it apart, but a lot of the time what they do is they just put the entire thing into their stomach and they just kind of digest the inside and then just kind of spit it out. Unfortunately, the sunflower star is endangered right now. This syndrome, which swept up the West Coast, called sea star wasting, sunflower stars, unfortunately, were one of the worst hit. We think that the populations dropped by at least 90%. We still don't know what caused it. Do you see the little dots floating around? They're larvae, and let's have a look. What we're attempting to do here is to raise a new generation of sea stars in the lab. Nice red stomachs from the food they've been eating. Fertilizing and raising the larvae, it takes a long time and a lot of effort. But the biggest challenge of all was figuring out how to make them transform into juveniles and then to grow up the juveniles. They're pretty cute. That latter part had never been done before with sunflower stars, and it's almost never been done before with any sea star. So this is a close-up of one of our one-year-old sea stars, a little bit over an inch in diameter. It's really important to understand these microscopic stages that people don't pay a lot of attention to. If we can raise them in the lab, it might be possible to reintroduce them to the wild in areas where they've disappeared. Everything that I do, I'm motivated by trying to understand life in the ocean. These are important basic questions. And so if we explore them, we are adding to a base of knowledge that will give us a leg up the next time something like this happens.